Hi, Glitter Girl here with a new mini adventure for this week. And this week I'm going to be focusing on using lots of little die cuts to dress up a page. And we'll need three sheets of paper, possibly four, to get started. And you'll need a selection of die cuts. I'm using the ephemera pack from the Maggie Holmes style board collection. But the ideas can be used with any, uh, any die cut pack or any arrangement of random die cuts that you might have collected. So I need two pieces of paper to make this background, which is going to be half one pattern and half another. And I'm using two contrasting colors there to set my color scheme. One in red from the Maggie Holmes style board collection, and then this one is Studio Calico in the aqua and turquoise, and it's from the That Away collection. Just want to cut these um, so that I have one that's going to be the full 12 by 12, but I'm going to cover part of it up. Um, so we'll choose whichever one you don't mind uh, using the whole sheet. And then I'm cutting the other one to 6 by 12, and I'm going to keep the other half of this because I like the camera print, and we'll certainly use that for something. So one 12 by 12 and one 6 by 12. So I've attached that red to the bottom and then I want to add something across the middle to dress it up before I start adding my photos. This is a great space to use a rather special paper because you won't need very much and then you can uh, take that paper and use it on plenty of layouts. So I'm using this craft with gold metallic dots and then I'm using a border punch so that I can just make a nice decorative strip to go right across the middle of the page. and. Um, what I tend to go for are quite simple border punches like this scallop because I'm going to cover up quite a bit of this border as I go and that way it's not so intricate that you can't tell what it is once it has a few more layers on top of the page. I added a little bit of ink to that strip and then that's my background ready to start adding my photo and everything else on top. So I'm using just one 4x6 photo today and wanted to add a mat. So this is where you might possibly use a fourth piece of paper. And I just have this bit of corrugated uh, turquoise paper in my scraps. So I'm going to mat the photo. And because this photo uses the rule of thirds, I'm going to mimic that in the layout. So I'm going to place their faces about a third of the way across that center line. So just adhere that. I do want to make sure that I can still add things around the edges of this corrugated mat. So I'm going to make sure that my adhesive is not right at the edge. It gives me a bit of space be able to just pick up those edges and tuck things underneath. And what I'm looking for is to put the midpoint between their eye line to match up with that line there so that I'm working with the lines I've already added to the page. And now I'm going to start in with my layers. Now the first thing I did was to pick a selection of the different die cuts in the pack that would work well with this layout. So some of those came from the color, some from the motif. Um, I've got a few numbers in here as well to work with the theme of the layout because it's from a 90th birthday party. So I'm going to use these two little sets of 90s. And one thing that I look for when I'm picking out the different die cuts is for things to fit together almost like a puzzle. So I started with this little circle and that fits in the middle of that circle so it doesn't matter that the center of this isn't particularly um, something that works for my layout. But then thought those two colors are really close together, the shades are very similar. So I found this circle that has a contrasting color and then I can add this one in the center. And then this is a good size to add a flare badge as well. So I have a two-piece flare badge. And I can build up pieces like this because they fit together. I also wanted to pick out a frame because frames give me two different things that I can um, use straight away other than putting them on a photo. And that's either I can put my journaling inside this just by putting a different piece of paper behind and adding my my words inside that frame or I can use the frame 
to be a place to hold the other elements that I want to add. So a bit like framing um, a collaged embellishment. So say I decided to have this right alongside here. Then I could work just in this space and I could add everything up just in the space. That's obviously not how the collage would look, look, but you get an idea of keeping everything contained there. So then I could still have a really clean layout where I would just add the title and the journaling, but have lots of little details held within this space. Or I can um, separate that out and use some of this as the, the embellishment, but also have embellishment elsewhere on the page. And that way I can just work within a different style depending on how embellished or clean I want the page to be. To add the die cuts, I start from the largest die cuts and then work down to the smallest ones because they're going to be the top little layers. So I end up with big pieces like this and quite often, especially if they're circular like a doily, I cut them in half so that I can use one on one spot of the page and then one somewhere else. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this one over here on the side. And then that means I need to work with these awkward edges. So it gives me somewhere to put things straight away because I want to cover up that awkward spot. And then I can work on a diagonal here, just mimicking the composition of the photo. There's something down here, there's something up here. So I want something down here and something up here. That's, that's how I'm going to put this all together. So because this is close to, but not exactly the same size, I want to make sure I move it up so it will be obvious that I don't um, mean for it to be exactly the same. This makes it a bit more purposeful. And then I'm just going to look whether this would look nicer inside or on the outside edge. And I think I'm going to go with putting it inside this. But then I think I want a different paper there. So find another element that's going to take up some of that space so that this is a completely different composition than what's in the background. From here I can take those smaller embellishments that go into stacks that I had figured out earlier and then work with them in this space. So I'm going to use the large frame here rather than just the space in the middle. to have these layers of circles, just tucking an edge under, but offsetting so they're not, they're not sitting all in the center, they're a bit more organic than that, so that it looks a bit more like a little haphazard stack of the die cuts. And then my flare badge on top, and place that just over toward the mat so that it all feels connected. I like this little space here for the numbers so I'm just going to go ahead and add them straight on top there. Just see about the placement of this nine. What I want to do is avoid something like this where the gap in the middle of the, the number or the letter has two different elements. I prefer it to, um, to not have the, the break of the different papers. So it should fit just there without any trouble. Now since I've brought in the blue on this side, it would be nice to bring that over here so I can use this blue and gold flower to layer here. And I can look for little details like the, um, the divot that's made between the two petals can frame the wording on that card. And then bring in my 90 in this grouping of embellishments as well. These are a little less worrisome because they're solid so I don't have that same problem of having a paper edge in the gap of the letter. And then I think continuing this green over here. So 
I'll use this as a little bit of room for journaling. But I'll bring this label down to this corner. That leaves my camera, which I think will fit nicely here as well. That gives me a natural little gap to put some writing in here. So I can straighten that one out a bit. And then I have these little bits and pieces that I can work with up here. I need some contrast because I don't want the yellow on the yellow. It's nicer with a bit of contrast, but then this is craft on craft. So I need a different element up here. So leave that for now and come back and add a little something else up here and go ahead and put my lettering in. I've got two different um, lettering options to put in. I'm going to use the darker one down here at the bottom, the thickers, and spell out part of the title in this gap here. But then also some flat red stickers um, from October afternoon to add in um, some writing above the photo as well. And that should frame it. So I'm just repeating the colors of the background, but I'm flipping them so that I have the contrast. So they'll be red on the aqua and aqua on the red. So I've added the lettering and also my journaling. I had some here and then just one little line to fit in that little gap in between. And now I'm going to finish adding in my embellishment. So I um, want to add in a few things that don't come from the die cut pack. I wanted to bring in more of the gold. So I have these uh, stickers from Create Paper and these Studio Calico chipboard hearts. I think I will use a few of these just to dot around the page. And then some word strips that fit in. So finding the words that would be the, um, the best fit for the story, of course. But they are quite um, quite adaptable words that can fit a range of different stories. Not too specific at all. Coming back to the spot where I needed something for contrast, I'm going to use one of the um, word stickers that's the right size, but I'm not uh, I'm not married to the idea of using that word, so nothing wrong with it. It would work if I decided to pull this up. But that way I have the contrast there in between. I can add in the different pieces. And just looking, I need, I'm going to cut off the edge of this because it's going to show through the petals and I'd rather not. In fact, I can just tear it off. And then my little chipboard hearts for that final detail. And I'll just look for places where there are several layers that I can overlap things. So instead of placing it just on the camera, I can place it here so that it brings all those different pieces together. Because now that piece overlaps several different elements. And a trick with little heart packages like this where you get a variety of different heart shapes, use the narrower ones on the outside, the wider, shorter hearts in the middle, and it just emphasizes the, um, the angles of the page. And then from here, you can add more embellishment if you want a, a more dressed up style, or of course you could have stopped a few steps ago and paired it back even more. Um, but that is uh, where I'm going to stop for today. And I'd love to challenge you to get your die cuts out this week and put them to use. So be it a, a random selection of die cuts or one pack that you've been meaning to use and haven't. If you've been saving them for a rainy day, go ahead and pull them out and put them to use on a layout. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.